Hey guys, welcome to another edition of the Sharpening Report. Got a very special show for you tonight. Uh, we're going to be talking about UFOs, Nephilim, all things paranormal from a Christian worldview. Uh, tonight, my guest tonight is Jeff Gerke. His pen name is Jefferson Scott, and he's written uh, many books. Uh, one of the books we're going to be talking about, and I'm providing a link to it in the video so you guys can check it out. Please check out the description. Uh, it's basically called UFOs and the Christian Worldview. You can get that on Amazon. Please support Jeff and go check that out. It's not a super expensive buy, and it's a it's a good read. So um, thank you for joining me tonight, Jeff. I appreciate it. Sure. Thanks, Jake, for having me on. Awesome, man. So as you know, man, this topic we're talking about tonight is a really just fascinating topic for so many Christians and, and for people that aren't believers. It's people are interested in the paranormal. They're interested in the supernatural. And since uh, 1947, the Roswell incident, you know, since all these things started to happen, now there's this fascination with this topic of aliens like never before. And there seems to be true encounters going on out there. But there's a lot of uh, misconception or maybe misunderstanding about what is all this about. You know, some of the questions that I mentioned we'll, we'll get into in the description. But, you know, just like one of the things that, it, like, why does the mainstream not talk on these topics? You know, the world is interested in these things. Um, and, the, and the church really has a lot of the answers. If you look in Ezekiel and many places in the Bible, you see references to the stuff we're going to discuss tonight. So anyways, thanks for joining me, Jeff. Why don't you give everybody a little bit, a little glimpse kind of into your background. I know you're a writer, but just give them a few of those details, some of the things you've written, and then we'll get into the discussion of um, this book that you've written and uh, the contents within. All right. Well, uh, I guess I got my start in my career as a Christian novelist. Um, back in the 90s, before some of your listeners were born, I uh, yeah. got a three-book deal at a Christian publishing house to write uh, a trilogy of near-future Christian techno-thrillers. And uh, then I got a job at that publishing house as an editor. So that kind of, um, between those two things, started my path as a writer and an editor. And I'm still on that path today. I ended up writing um, three more novels. Uh, the next three was a trilogy of uh, Christian military thrillers. I worked for three different Christian publishing houses, uh, ran, launched and ran fiction departments, um, <clears throat> then was also teaching at writers conferences on how to write fiction. Yeah. And uh, when I left um, the last publishing house where I was working, I, about a year later I launched my own publishing house that was dedicated to Christian fantasy and science fiction novels and paranormal and, you know, all the weird stuff. Because, you know, all the time during my uh, my time at those publishing houses, you know, they, the publishers would not publish the kind of books I was interested in. And, you know, science fiction and fantasy. And I was trying to figure out why that was. Uh, sometimes I would champion a book by another writer and it would get published. And then it would sell terribly, and I was I was just very confused by what was going on, and mm -hmm. finally had a big epiphany about what it was, and that led to me creating my own publishing house. And um, then I've written uh, several books uh, for a company called Writer's Digest on how to write fiction, mm -hmm. and uh, now I've been a, a freelance editor and writer and cover designer and artist for uh, several years. Interesting. So, man, when you were doing the research for this particular book and this topic, what got you? Is this something you had like been interested in for a long time? Like, how did you? How did all this start for you? Well, this is going to instantly age me, and people are going to start doing the math. But when I was <laughs> when I was twelve years old, the original Star Wars came out. Yeah. Okay? And you know, whatever happens to you at age twelve is like going to set you for the rest of your life, and hopefully, it's yeah. Anything. And for me, it was science fiction. And I was like, oh, this is, this is, I don't know what to do with it, but I've got to do this my whole life. And so I was always interested in, in science fiction. And so the idea of aliens and space travel, that didn't bother me. In fact, I loved it. Um, and then as a teenager, I became a Christian and I was, you know, at times I was going now, now, wait a minute, how do I, you know, put these things together? And uh, I ended up going to seminary and get a master of divinity degree. And I, at some point after I'd graduated from seminary, I, 
I was uh, watching a documentary on UFOs and I just went, I felt myself with this kind of fear, like, um, mm. what, what does this mean? And, you know, if these are real, and of course I knew that all the footage was faked and, you know, they couldn't prove anything and I didn't believe it, but at the same time there was enough, you know, experiences going on out there that something was happening. And, uh, you know, we, we, people who are not Christians, I think they are interested in UFOs. And I think it's because sometimes because they want something to believe in, but they've rejected traditional, you know, religion. And then I think Christians sometimes avoid this topic because it seems to conflict with Christianity. You know, what would it mean if there really were uh, extraterrestrials and intelligent aliens? And how does that fit with, you know, are, are we the pinnacle of creation like God says in, in Genesis? Or mm. are we just, you know, uh, inferior? And did would Jesus have to die for the aliens too? And, you know, you know what does yeah. it all mean? And when I watched that documentary after seminary, I just, I kind of, I felt the fear of it. Like, does this threaten my faith? And then I got mad. I was like, okay, you know, Buddy, you know, let's look at this, let's let's look at this thing in the face and uh, and and see what's going on. So I decided, all right, you know, bring all my you know my education and my seminary degree and all my faith and all my intelligence and all my research, love, and just tackle this thing head on. And um, so you know, I kind of made some uh, decisions in my own faith. You know, when I go into this UFO study. I'm not interested in trading Christianity for the love of the galactic brethren. You know, I'm right. I'm going to come out of this with the same faith I'm going into it with. And, you yeah. know, I made some decisions no matter what I discover, or whatever I come to believe out of the research, uh, I'm still going to come out of it with my same faith. And I, I asked myself the question, you know, what if I come to believe that there really are aliens? and uh you know intelligent beings what does that mean and i basically came to some faith conclusions for myself and kind of armed with those i opened up the ufo literature and started doing the research and started re i read a few books by christian authors but i kind of had this uh, idea in my mind that you know every christian if they if they talk about ufos and aliens at all they, they just say well ufos aliens or demons I was like, oh, that's so simplistic, you know, uh, not everything is demons, and my pencil mm -hmm. fell down, a demon didn't push it down, you know, <laughs> so, yeah. so I, I kind of said, well, I'm not going to go there, I'm going to go find some other answer, uh, and it's funny, you know, we'll talk later about where I ended up, but it's, it's funny the things we say we're never going to believe, or <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but so I, I read a few books by Christian authors, um, on the topic, but most of what I read was the secular literature and lots of stuff on MUFON and, you know, all the uh, UFO true believer kind of uh, things. I read lots of abduction testimonies and, uh, you know, just read about the crop circles and the abduction experiences and the mutilations and the uh, close encounters and, you know, just, just left out and, and just asked the big questions. Yeah, no, that's awesome, man. And I think a lot of people, um, I, I actually, you know, years ago became fascinated with uh, the topics of UFOs and aliens and all this stuff. And I would listen to Coast to Coast yeah. more to my detriment, really, than anything. <laughs> I got obsessed, man, as a Christian. Yeah. And it's dangerous. It really is. Because and there's once a you. There's element to it, isn't what's there? That? Yeah. There is a fear there, Well, there. There is, and the problem is the Bible says to focus on whatsoever things are pure, just, of good report. Think on these things, right? And so I think you hit the nail on the head earlier when you said uh, you were talking about not everything's a demon, right? Not everything's – and so you can get focused on the wrong things and get too obsessed with it, yeah. and it can actually open up doorways that you don't want to open. And yeah, the enemy – go ahead. What's that? I said you have a background in that, so you're sensitive to it. Too. Yes, and that's one thing that I like to tell people is if someone has a background where maybe you've been exposed to the occult through stuff that's gone on in your family line or maybe you've been directly involved, 
um, you're going to be much more sensitive to these topics than other people. And so you really got to be careful how far you go with your research and, and really what you put your mind on, because the enemy will use that. People have different drawings and he will try and use that uh, to basically hinder your progress, to try and deceive you, to try. I mean, he's crafty. The enemy is very crafty. I just want to share this one point, man, because this is crazy. I, I've been sharing testimonies. You know, I've been producing testimonies of people on YouTube and on my personal YouTube channel. I share this, but life after death testimonies I'm very passionate about uh, because now today people, when they when they pass on, many times they bring them back and they have these experiences. A lot of people see heaven. Some people see some terrible things. Right. And so I think it's just important for people to focus on the fact that this life is short. Yeah. Well, a gentleman sent me an email saying, God says, thus saith the Lord, I will judge you like all this horrible stuff. And so immediately I just knew I'm like, you know, this guy is not of God. He wasn't sent from the Lord to give some kind of message to me. And I looked up his email address on Google Hangouts. And the only thing he had posted on his profile page was this satanic song talking <laughs> about magical powers in Satan. And he was actually from Germany, didn't even speak English. Hmm. And so he's going around basically discouraging people from evangelizing on YouTube. Yeah. And basically, uh, hoping that they will hear this message of judgment from God that they need to repent and stop what they're doing. Yeah, and yeah. this is, this is pure, just the devil using people to hinder and, and basically just using people as tools to stop evangelism, to stop. He hates the gospel being spread. He hates people being saved. And so the alien deception is a big part of this for the world. People are interested in the supernatural and they're willing to go to the world's version of that, which is UFOs and aliens. So well, yeah. man, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to agree with you that, you know, what better way to appeal to 21st century man who's rejected God than to appear as a high tech, um, you know, intergalactic traveler who is in touch with his spiritual side. Mm -hmm. You know, and if you listen to these, the alien message, it's uh, it's Eastern religion. I mean, yeah. You know, it's like, wait, why, why did you cross the cosmos to come and tell us about Mother Earth? <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, why don't you give us free energy for crying out loud if you're a real alien? So in, in your, your research, research, you said you read a, a few Christian books, and I know you read, obviously, a lot of secular material as well. So where did this all start for you, man? Like when you started to do this examination, did you start with the Bible or did you start with UFO accounts or tell us a little bit about some of those things that you encountered? Yeah, like I said, I, um, I'm, I made some decisions before I opened any of the books. You know, I was just like, okay, I'm, I'm going to, these are my foundational things no matter what I find. And so <clears throat> that's where I started. And that was Bible based. You know, I even thought about the claims that, um, you know, um, Moses was given the Ten Commandments by a UFO and radiation exposure explains why his hair turned white and you know uh elijah was taken up in a ufo and <clears throat> the pillar of fire was really a ufo you know and and uh the angel encounters were really alien encounters and you know i kind of did that examination of the bible and those claims and uh, came to my own conclusions about uh what those were and for the record i don't think any of them are are anything except what they say they are, that they're yeah. acts of God and servants of God. But <clears throat> so I did start with the Bible in that sense. And then I think I didn't, you know, this has been 22 years ago that I did this study. So uh, I think that I didn't turn to the Christian UFO books yet. I kind of didn't want them to preform my, my theories. I wanted to go out and see what I thought after reading the secular accounts. So, you know, I went to the library back when there were things called printed books and uh, <laughs> checked, yeah, out, whole, uh, yeah, uh, I know, checked out whole stacks of them and took them home and scared my wife, you know, and, uh, <laughs> and uh, read those and uh, read them on different topics, not just UFOs, but uh, uh, various alien encounters and the um, remote viewing and astral projection and, you know, related things like that. And the, and you know, I'm a, I'm a good researcher and synthesizer. Mm -hmm. I start, you know, pulling together things from different sources and coming up with theories. And 
I kind of know when I've rounded the corner. I mean, this was a several months long study where I was reading and reading and thinking and collating and, and synthesizing. And certain themes started to emerge uh, from the research, at least in my mind. And uh, certain arguments started uh, presenting themselves. And um, I, uh, when I started rounding the corner on those, that's when I, and I started forming my own opinions of what's going on. That's when I turned to the Christian UFO literature. Because like I said, I didn't want them to pre-form my opinions. And some of them that I found uh, agreed with several of my uh, theories and some of them just dis disagreed and that that's fine but that that was the progress I started with the Bible then I went out to the secular literature and that's where I spent most of my time and then I turned to the UFO literature I mean the Christian UFO literature and then then I decided okay I need to write all this up in a in a in a book and so that's what yeah happened so have let me ask you man have you met anybody that's had these experiences personally or have you ever had any type of unexplainable occurrence um i before i was a christian when i was a kid i had a what i believe was a demonic experience but there was no uh form mm -hmm. i didn't see any form so i couldn't tell you if it was alien or demon or bigfoot or you know whatever but uh and in my dreams over the years i've had what i i knew you know how you know things in a dream sometimes yes and, and yes sometimes you don't every time i've had one of these dreams i have known that this alien i'm seeing in my dream just in my heart in the dream i know this is a demon so that mm -hmm. that's a spoiler alert for where i'm going on on my conclusions of my research and in my dream i'm calling on the name of jesus and casting out these aliens and they're you know fleeing interesting and but i i have not ever seen a ufo in my waking life i have uh I, I don't know if i've met in person anybody but i've received you know hundreds of emails from people uh who read my book and they say boy you, this totally explains what happened to me and you know so i've had lots of email conversations with with these folks um yeah yeah, no, and I know that there's the topic of encounter or abductions you talk about in your book, and I know there's various there's various ideas out there about you know what the abduction represents, what the purpose of it is. What was your finding, man, on the abductions after looking at it? Was there a common denominator for people that ended up getting pulled up, getting sucked up into the mothership, if you will? Yeah, there were a number of common denominators. And uh, some of them are, are very puzzling and uh, don't make any sense uh, if the cover story is right. right. Uh, for instance, um, many of them suffer um, torture style uh, probes by the alien scientists, like you know, six inch needles being stuck in their eyeballs and stuff like this. And you know, it's just humorous to me that uh, you know, these aliens who are supposedly very advanced, right? They can cross time and space supposedly. And, uh, you know, their spaceships are, can defy gravity and change direction and change shape. And so they're super high tech, right? But they don't know that in order to do this uh, genetic research that they're supposedly doing, that they don't have to stick a six inch needle in your eye. Uh, they could just do a freaking cheek swab and get a DNA sample, right? Mm -hmm. So that sounds like torture. It is to torture. Me. It's yeah. pure. So, you know, there are a number of common elements. One of them is uh, that the uh, abductee uh, feels lied to and abused, and that's just the beginning. Usually there's torture and uh, terror, and almost always there is that uh, element of, of dominating and um, crushing the spirit and toying with and just absolute dominion over uh, the person and uh, you know just violating them in every single way through every single orifice yeah and, you know in a physical way in a mental way you know lies that they've been implanted with some you know impregnation and later they're gonna take it out and harvest it and mm -hmm. you know uh, but the the main the worst common element is this terror 
yeah, and fear. Yeah, that 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 really, if they were truly just studying mankind, like they say, then mm -hmm. they wouldn't. And if they're so evolved and in touch with Mother Earth and all this stuff, then they would know that they were terrorizing their subjects, right? But right. but they either don't know or don't care, and that's where the cover story breaks down because. Uh, you know, they know they're doing it and uh, they, they, they couldn't possibly not know that, you know, us, their, their favorite space pals um, uh, are in terror. And so it, it's not, in my opinion, it's not about any kind of research baloney. It's about right. terrorizing. And one of the secular books I read um, said that the, uh, it was a remote viewing book, a book about mm -hmm. remote viewing where a guy can there's a movie about remote viewing called The Men Who Stare at Goats. Yes, yes. With and, uh, Jeff Bridges, was yeah, it? Yeah, Jeff Bridges and Clooney. Yeah. And, you know, they And uh, Spacey. Right. And they, they're supposed to be able to project their consciousness out. And mm -hmm. this was a real CIA program. And this guy who wrote this book had been in the program. And he was on a remote viewing experience where he had projected his spirit out and whatever you believe about it, I don't know, but he witnessed uh, an alien abduction going on. And there were these, uh, you know, people being abused with the needles and the being having a, you know, a spike stuck up their rectum as they were being rotated over a, as a, on a spit, you know, all these horrible, horrible stuff. And um, there were these disembodied aliens uh, that were watching it and they, he sensed that they were feeding on the fear. Mm -hmm. It was sustenance to them. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, this is a secular thing and a secular book and he's describing, you know, demonic oppression basically wow. and, and people or uh, spirits who are uh, receiving some kind of joy or food from terror. So no wonder that's what happens to all these abductees. Uh, they're terrorized because, you know, the aliens are hungry. Wow. And, you <laughs> know, honestly, man, in abuse and child abuse and all these things that I believe come from the same type of darkness, the same element is there is to create fear and terror in the victim. And the and, absolute mastery of the one doing it. Yeah. Controlling the individual. That's what this is all about, man. Yeah, and it totally right. lines up. It totally lines up with, um, with uh, basically, you know, that, that same theme. Um, I'm going to jump forward, a little, not necessarily jump forward, but I had a, uh, some of the viewers are asking questions. The chat room is very busy tonight. Thank you guys. If you're watching right now, please go over to the chat room and join us. Some really interesting stuff going on there. But uh, uh, Ray, and actually, I got to thank Ray because Ray has been helping me with my graphics for my shows. He's been putting together the JPEG and stuff, volunteering his time. He's doing a fantastic job. I want to thank him for helping, uh, helping the sharpening report out. But his question was, if you had any thoughts on what's going on with the situation in CERN. And I know there's a lot of different theories about it, but how, do, are you familiar with the project at CERN, what they're doing? You talking about the super collider? Yeah, the super hydron collider. Yeah. About the how it's being sabotaged or whatever. Well, I mean the the theories that I've heard in the people that I deal with on a regular basis, one of the common beliefs, and I mean they've they've said this at CERN is that basically they're trying to open up a portal to another dimension. One of their directors who's heavily involved in the project actually said this, that they're trying to reach out into another dimension to see if they can pull something out of it. And so what they're doing is they're basically colliding particles at a massive rate at each other, basically trying to create a scenario where they can open up uh, basically connection to another dimension. Wow. Um, so it's, and again, whether or not they're going to accomplish that, there's a lot of questions to it, but and since you don't know much about the topic, I'm just going to touch on it for the viewers because I'm more familiar with it. Okay. It's very strange because the area that the um, that CERN is located is real close to uh, the region in the Netherlands where they had this Gothard tunnel ceremony. Were you familiar with that? Did you see that bizarre footage? Mm -mm. Okay, so basically all these guys got together to have this massive ritual to open this tunnel, right? And it was like they're dancing around in goat suits and 
de- de- demon suit, just the most bizarre thing. And one thing I've learned is if it's bizarre and it makes no sense and it's confusing, chances are it's occultic in nature because that is the that is the heart of the devil. He brings confusion. Right. He is the author of confusion. The right. Bible says that God is not the author of confusion. So in this same region where this is happening, CERN is built actually right where a poly, uh, a polycom, I believe is the name of it, what it used to be, but it was actually where a temple used to be to Apollyon. Okay. <laughs> and if you read revelation, it talks about the key being given to the bottomless pit to open it up. Apollyon basically the key, the key being given to him and they're built, they built this super hydron collider right in the region where the temple used to be. And they've even said they're trying to open up a portal. Right. So to me, man, whether or not they're going to accomplish it, I believe the motives behind the group doing this is demonic. Well, Um, I would agree. You You know, my, my take on that is, and this is just my theological bent. Yeah. um, But, you know, I believe that God is the one who pulls the trigger on the end times, not, you know, a bunch of scientists and a bunch of guys in goat suits. So I, I think they can try all they want, but until God's ready to, to lift the curtain, I don't think it's going to happen. But right. I mean, I, I don't, I wouldn't be surprised if he let them succeed. Well, and that's the thing. It's, it says that he gives the key mm-hmm. unto him, right? So if there's a God, which is actually a demon behind the scenes, using these people and operating, maybe this is the natural method right. to open this stuff up. Because man, let's face it, in Revelation, guys, there is some weird stuff that you can't, it's, it's, you know, talking about scorpions coming up out of the pit, like stinging those that do not have the seal of God upon them. Yeah. I mean, how do you explain? I mean, there's some very strange stuff in the end times. And so you, you can't just say it's all figurative. There's some literal stuff going on, but so go we, ahead, man. We made a jump and probably most of your audience this hour made the jump with us, but let me just go ahead and spell it out. Yeah, sure. You know, I started my study, my research, already rejecting the theory that uh, aliens were demons. I just thought that was too simple, too pat an right. answer. And the, you know, the more I studied it, the more I went, this really feels demonic, especially when the abductions had nothing to do with medicine and nothing to do with high tech and were all about terror. These creatures who were feeding on terror, I, re- I happened to stumble on a book on Catholic exorcisms um, during the time I was doing this research. And I I was just sitting in the bookstore and I popped open the book and just randomly read a chapter. And it was a guy describing his demon when he had been uh, uh, possessed. And he saw him as a small creature with a large head. He was gray. He had spindly arms and legs. He had oversized black eyes. I'm like, that's a gray. No. Yeah. That's a gray. And his demon, which was called a demon, is what we would call an alien. So, you know, over and over, I kept seeing these roads leading to this sadistic way. And, you know, in my book, I talk about uh, eight major arguments for why I now believe that aliens are demons. And I'll just hit the the top one because I want to go on to other things. But, um, you know, we make a distinction between people who like affiliate themselves with Christianity. You know, if they have to, they're not Muslim, they're not Buddhist, they're so they'll put Christianity, but it's not really, um, you know, their life. You know, mm-hmm. we would distinguish between what we'd call walk the walk Christians and those that are just like talk the talk Christians. And so when we talk about those serious, you know, truly devoted Christians with the seal of, of God on their foreheads, um, those people are never abducted by aliens. Mm. In all my research, I've never found one that um, has been truly abducted. Now, sometimes baby Christians are, and sometimes, you know, kind of tertiary, secondary level, uh, fringe Christians are. Mm -hmm. And, um, but by and large, the group that is exempt from alien abductions is 
true Christians, disciples of the Lord. Okay, so wow. if if that is true, why would that be true? That's, why would that be true? Curious. If these are aliens from another planet, they mm -hmm. wouldn't distinguish between Christian, you know, real Christians and non-real Christians. They wouldn't care about that, except, you know, there would be an even distribution of abductions. Um, there would be no statistical difference. They wouldn't avoid Christians for any reason at all. There's no explanation for why real extraterrestrials would avoid Christians. Okay, but there is an explanation for why mm -hmm. demons would avoid Christians who have the Holy Spirit alive in a, a fire in their hearts, right? So that's just one of my eight arguments for, yeah. for why I think that uh, aliens are really demons. No, that's, that's an interesting point, man. And I, I've heard it said that, yes, Christians generally are not abducted, but I've never heard the argument. Why is it that Christians aren't abducted? Like as a just general research, if you're looking at a population and saying, you know, if these aliens are really interested in investigating and learning all they can about us, you think they would take somebody from every group and facet, but right. why right. not? Yeah, that's interesting. And the other, the flip side of that is on the human side of UFO researchers. Okay, if you were investigating the UFO phenomenon mm -hmm. and you found that, let's just say, for example, there was one population that was seemed to be extremely popular to UFOs, you know, and alien abductions, wouldn't you say, hey, we need to see what they're doing, what's different about them that causes them to be bait, you know, magnetic to these? Yeah. And, and if you found another population that seemed to be a repellent, you know, alien repellent, uh, wouldn't you be interested in studying that group? You know, but you don't yes. get that. You don't see them differentiating and noticing, like I noticed in my book, that people who, and you would agree with this, people who have been pursuing the occult, Mm -hmm. uh, the Ouija boards and the fortune tellers and the horoscopes and the, you know, demonic whatevers. That is the population that is first in line when the aliens come calling, right? They're the mm -hmm. ones most attracted or most open or basically calling out to aliens, right? So there's a connection between a pursuit of the occult and aliens, right? But yeah. that's never studied in the demonic, I mean, I'm sorry, in the yeah, UFO. Yeah, isn't, isn't that strange that they don't even examine that element? It's totally rejected. Right. I mean, they'll, it, they'll mention it. Like the literature says, well, abductees tend to be unchurched, you know, yeah. or tend to have dabbled in the occult. But they don't think of it as a primary indicator. And on the other side, they don't look at the population that's being avoided by yeah. these aliens. And so there's a, a, a blindness or a dishonesty in the investigation of this phenomenon in the right. secular UFO and, community. And did you know that I'm finding that in many of the paranormal cases where ghosts and apparitions and stuff appear, the same type of deception is there as well. They never deal with any occult elements. Right. I'm doing then, a re yeah, I'm doing a research project right now comparing basically occult sites to haunted sites, meaning mm -hmm. like where there's hauntings in the United States or claimed hauntings, right? With a high percentage of people saying, yes, things are happening here. I'm finding that as an example, and I, I use this group because they're widely public and you can easily find the information on where they're at and they're unified is the Freemasonry organizations, which is actually a cult. I've, I reference Freemasonry locations and correspondence with haunted locations in the state of Kansas. Mm -hmm. And I found that over 25% of the hauntings in Kansas were within half a mile of a lodge. And some of them were feet from a lodge. Wow. We, we had hauntings in a town where there were literally three haunted locations within a, a 60 yard distance from a Freemasonry lodge. Well, and you should add a yeah. layer to your study and add in uh, UFO sightings and encounters and see if there's a correlation Abs there. Absolutely. Um, it's going to be a longer project. I'm, I'm still working on it, but this is something that no one ever looks at, right? And right. it's it's how this all started for me, man, is I, was, I went to this little town called Weston, Missouri. You can go there, and they've got this little ice cream parlor down there in the, the middle of their main street or whatever. And when I went in there, 
got this weird feeling, checkered floors, all these Freemason Freemasonry symbols and stuff in there. But overall, against the wall, there were these seven black gargoyles, like a foot tall on glass shelves. And they had the names of the seven sins located on them. And then I looked in the gift shop and it was like pewter dragons and all this weird, you know, ancient looking occultic type stuff. And I was asking myself, what in the world does this have to do with an ice cream like candy shop for kids? And why would you have these gargoyles on display? They weren't for sale. They didn't have a they didn't have a tag on them. Right. Mm. Well, going back, what I found out was there's a Freemasonry Lodge right next door to it. And not only was the ice cream shop haunted, but their tea room above the above the place was haunted. Mm. And then there's a hotel room right across the street that's haunted. Mm. And there's all these occultic items. And when the ghost hunters go in, they never photograph the side of the room that has the gargoyles and all the demonic stuff. Mm. It's like, guys, are you not smart enough to figure out, wait, hey, there's all these there's all these satanic one foot gargoyles. Maybe that has something to do with it, <laughs> but they ignore it. It's just, and so that's how I know it's just right. And the true, the anime, the true yeah. believers are true believers in a certain thing. You know, they they want UFOs to be not just unidentified but unidentifiable, mm -hmm. right? That's the right. thing. If you can put a tag on it and say, "Well, I've identified it for you." Yes, it's an interdimensional being, but it's not what you're thinking. It's something else, then they're not interested. It has to be unidentifiable for it to remain the object of their faith. That's true. It's interesting. It's ambiguous and it's unobtainable. It's just out of reach. Right. right. Because if it were in reach and if it were public, you would be able to probably disprove it or the true nature right. of it would be revealed. But I notice it's always, um, it's always just out of reach. It's always like you can't ever find, you know, true it was there and then it's there. not. Yeah. It's just enough to cause the interest, right? Right. So it's interesting, man, because even in the book of Job, you see one of the first references to what I would call a paranormal, like UFO type encounter. Sleep paralysis is basically what he explains. Mm. A spirit passing over his face mm -hmm. in the night and terror came upon him. Mm -hmm. This is the exact fear. This is exactly what you were talking about, man. Job, going back to ancient biblical history, wow. one of the oldest figures... I mean, he goes back, the book of Job is actually the oldest book of the Bible, the one that was written earliest. Yeah. But he had this paranormal encounter. And we saw before this encounter happened that the devil was given the ability by God to put his hand upon him. Yeah. So you see a reference to Satan being given charge to do whatever he wants to to this guy. And now he's having these encounters. He was a man of faith. He was a man of a, a righteous man. And so I would argue that this is probably one of the few Christians that has, you know, few legitimately righteous people that have these experiences because the devil was given permission. Right. Kind of a special one. -off. Yeah. And in Joe, in Job's case, God had to give permission. But I'm going to tell you this right now and tell many of the viewers this many times the people out there, they're giving the devil permission. That's right. And because, how you give. Yeah. How you give the devil permission is by opening up areas in your life to him. Well, there's there's yeah. usually steps, you know, part yeah. of it is you you show an interest in the occult, you go and do that seance, you go ahead and do the Ouija board, you play it as a game, whatever. And then usually a next step will be in a dream, you'll be approached by something that will be kind of sitting on the outskirts on the perimeter and mm -hmm. kind of be asking for you to to have permission and if in the dream you get permission yeah yeah come close then there's this connection then you start seeing things in your waking life mm -hmm. and again it usually is like something on the edge of your vision and something falls around you it's poltergeist like activity and all of these are times where you still have this free will human free will but yeah. every time you give permission you're seeding your free will over and over until the point where now he's got permission to just come in and, and throttle you in your sleep. That's interesting. And it's interesting, man, because this is also the common theme behind the mythology of, say, like vampires, mm. which I believe, you know, it's demonic in origin. I, all mythology comes from something in the spirit 
mm-hmm. or something real, I believe. But you've got these entities that you actually have to give permission for them to come into your house. That's right. It's the same. It, it all comes from the same spirit, guys. All this demonic stuff, it comes from the same thing. Yeah. And so part of the reason that I'm doing what I'm doing and Jeff and I had this conversation earlier is to expose darkness, but also to bring light. Mm-hmm. And the message is that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the true salvation. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and he is more powerful than anything that the devil could bring. So if you're watching this tonight and you're experiencing paranormal stuff, you're experiencing demonic oppression, whatever, I want to encourage you, surrender to Jesus, give it to him. What was your What was your findings when people called on the name of Jesus during these encounters, even if Good. they were not believers? Good transition because that's where I was. I was trying to interrupt you to get in to say this. Because yeah, you, sorry, no, sorry. No, you, I'm going to let you yeah. talk, man. This Sounds is a fa- this is the most fun I've had in a while on this program. This awesome. is just great. Go ahead. Um, so one of my other arguments why I believe aliens are demons is that abductions that are in progress. There, there, uh, in my research, I found there are three things that can hinder an abduction uh, attempt or an abduction in process. One of them is, was that righteous anger and one was strength of spirit. But those were just like temporary stops. And later in the night or the next night, the thing would come back. The only thing that could permanently stop an abduction, an alien abduction, was calling on the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Okay, so think about that for a minute. If these are aliens from planet whatever, right, why would the name of what they claim is a, you know, a minor teacher from history, Mm -hmm. why would that have any effect on them at all? Why would they be repelled by, you know, a, a spiritual name? Right. The only explanation for why an alien abduction could be stopped permanently by the name of Jesus is if this is a spiritual warfare encounter going on. Yeah. I mean, you, that's almost a, a, you know, mic drop kind of argument right there, because if the name of Jesus can prevent and, and end mm-hmm. alien abductions, then this is a spiritual encounter primarily. And it's a demonic encounter, primarily. End of end of debate, end of conversation. So, uh, you know, I feature one in the book where this new Christian, uh, uh, baby Christian, was had had an ex- uh, a past where he'd been abducted by aliens and tortured and put on the spit through his rectum and rotated around and, mm. you know, all the awful thing, you know, the body parts in the, in the vats he was made to see and, you know, all this to just, just horrific stuff. And so as a baby Christian, he's uh, abducted out of his bed. He's levitated out of his bed. He's spinning around and in his fear, but his new faith, he calls on the name of Jesus, 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 Jesus. And he said, I felt that the beings, the aliens around me were actually hurt by my words and my faith. And they immediately withdrew and dropped me on the bed. And he said, my wife woke up and said, why are you jumping on the bed? (laughs) So, uh, you know, why it doesn't make sense that uh, E.T. would be uh, repelled by the name of Jesus, uh, you know, he would be curious if this was really an alien scientist. He'd go, oh, that's interesting. You know, tell me more about this Jesus, and why do you think that it has power over me? But to actually drive them away, why mm-hmm. is that? There's something going on that is spiritual, not extraterrestrial going on. Well, and I just wanted to interject at this point again to say, guys, the people that I have contact me, and I, I, I put this out there because I've been through this stuff. I've been through the demonic assaults. I've been through sleep paralysis. I've had all these things happen. The people that contact me that are experiencing spiritual warfare, they're experiencing all this paranormal stuff, it all can be tied back to either something occultic or involving someone else who is heavily influenced by the occult. Or, uh, you know, these these basically activities that open up the doors. Pornography, man. Someone mentioned in the chat tonight is a huge open door. I interviewed a guy uh, by the name of uh, his name is Brandon, and I had him on the show. And his in his story, he was heavily involved in pornography before he got 
saved, right? And it was so bad. His problem was so bad um, that his kids would wake up in the middle of the night screaming in terror, like having night terrors. He would see like black stuff just fly across the room. Just basically it's it's opening up these demonic doorways, right? And so this is a clear example, man. These people have these doorways open up. Well, and or, go ahead, go ahead. Examine somebody's story of a demonic encounter, like you just described, the sleep paralysis, stuff flying around the room, mm -hmm. and then compare that to the story of someone having an alien abduction encounter. It's very similar. Yeah, line by line, they're the same. So, mm -hmm. you know, to me, it just became uh, ridiculous anymore to try to distinguish and say, no, aliens aren't demonic. Because, you know, if you can read a book on exorcisms and it reads like the UFO literature, yeah, there's some connection. Well, did you know that there is a there's a telescope that the Vatican actually has access to? The Vatican is seeking out uh, ex they're seeking out uh, life outside of our planet. Mm -hmm. they're, they've announced that they're doing this. The name of the the name of the telescope that they're using to do the examinations is called Lucifer. <laughs> it's crazy, man. It, this is I, I would never believe it if it weren't true in public, right. but it's true. They've come out and said that they're examining the possibilities of life outside of this earth and the spiritual implications and whether or not these entities can be saved or whether they can be, I don't know, brought into the church, however the Catholic church says it. But man, you want to talk about just a system that is globally just opening itself up like a flower, like just come on in, man. It, it's insane. It's so insane. Another topic I want to talk about on this sure. is that, you know, I don't know if there's going to be a rapture. Right. Okay. Uh, the Bible, you can make a good argument for and against. But and I, I suspect the demons don't know either, but they have already come up with a way to explain it in case it happens. Yeah. And if you examine the message that the aliens give, you know, whether it's through New Age channelers or to the abductees or whoever is receiving this alien message, uh, very common that you hear over and over um, that you know that the good space brothers are wanting to bring Earth and humanity to this new big change, this new level of consciousness. And the thing that's standing in the way, the power of darkness, are these um, these conservative fundamentalist uh, patriarchal Christians. And, uh, you know, they're, they're old, ancient views and they're standing in the way. And, you know, if we could just remove them, then we could get on and really get, you know, get down to business. And so they've said, you know, in the future, because they're standing in the way, uh, we're going to bring the motherships down and we're going to beam them all up, right? Take them all the way to another planet to be re-educated so that they will be enlightened and you know and so don't worry if a bunch of people suddenly disappear right mm -hmm. because uh that's just us taking them off for re-education so interesting they have they have pre-explained the the rapture right right and so yeah. people won't worry they won't go oh i wonder if this is god they'll go oh no yeah. wait that's just the the ufos are going off okay new masters tell us what to do to achieve the well, new level of awareness yeah one thing i just want to interject real quick for the people that are watching is tonight we're not saying by any or he's not saying by any means jesus christ isn't coming back just the idea of a rapture people have different viewpoints on it some people believe that jesus is going to return to rule and reign based on eschatology but honestly i don't we don't really do a lot of eschatology on the show because it's such a dividing issue but i just wanted to clarify that but google go ahead with your point man yeah no i don't i don't i don't know what the sequence is going to be the bible you right. can lay out several different scenarios mm -hmm. and you know frankly i think the best explanation of of the bible the way i see it is that there will be a rapture um but because you know, part of that uh, conclusion came from the UFO study because 
you know, the, the aliens are saying that if we could just get these basically walk to walk Christians out of the way, you know, we could, we could do some real damage. And uh, there's a passage in, I think, Second Thessalonians where Paul says, you know, the man of lawlessness is waiting to come. He's ready to come, but you know what stands in his way. And as soon as it's removed, then the end times are going to happen. So I personally mm -hmm. believe that the the thing standing in the way of the end times is is the church, is the body of Christ and Christians, which is exactly what the demons are saying too, or the aliens are saying, which is these fundamentalist right. Christians are in the way. And so, you know, if we get them out of the way, and you know, that I believe is when God is going to pull the trigger on on the end times is when rapture happens. Now, I could be totally wrong. This maybe yeah. is wishful thinking because I don't want to go through the tribulation. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. Well, it, I mean, here's how I look at it, man, is uh, Daniel went into the lion's den. Uh, Noah had to board the ark. You know, Shadrach, Meshach, and a billy goat had to go into the <laughs> furnace, right? Right. So God always provides a way of escape, but primarily the way he does it is to bring glory to himself and to prove himself right. and not just like magically make it all go away. Right. right. He could have easily just made, taken mad Shadrach, Meshach and a billy goat somewhere else, but yeah. he didn't. Right. He allowed them to go through the fire right. to have their faith tried. So I'm not saying necessarily that's the case, but that's been the history in the past. Yeah. Uh, someone made an interesting comment, which I've heard this before too. Um, uh, the Pope basically had met with the head of the Orthodox Church for the first time in 962 years. Um, and then the head of the Orthodox Church went to Antarctica for some mysterious thing, right? And Antarctica is obviously a very like desolate region, many parts uninhabitable, you know, it's an area where people just don't go. So it, it makes me, it, it brings a lot of interest on that topic. And I know Steve Quayle, I believe has done some work on this type of stuff, but the, the Pope that we have now too is also like the first Jesuit Pope that we've had. So um, I don't know, man, you have all this stuff going on. Uh, that well, seems and to, a lot of times the, um, the alien message is that, you know, there's this great danger coming to Earth. Usually it's you're polluting your Earth and Mother Mother Gaia can't handle it and she's going to purge herself of the toxins or or the Space Brotherhood and Space, what is it, Federation is going to come and, you yeah. know, d destroy everybody. But one of the common themes is that there's a rogue planet that's going to come through your system. Planet X. Yeah, but I mean, this yeah. was 22 years ago when I did this research and they had no idea that this year, you know, in the last six months, they were going to come up with a really strong hypothesis that there really is a rogue planet in our system. Wow. So, you it, know, maybe that's one more thing. You need to, if you ever get a chance, um, read a book by Doug Elwell. And he was actually published by Defender Publishing, who I work for. But he wrote a book on Planet X that's absolutely amazing. And he theorizes in the book that actually Planet X, that the flood event, that happened after creation, like this flood event was actually caused the first time when planet X came within our orbit. And basically that there was matter from the earth shot out into space that was pulled into the gravitational orbit of this planet. And then planet X departed and it's coming back around. Well, get this. He talks about wormwood, which is basically uh, in the Bible, it talks about, see, uh, I think it's in Revelation, it talks about wormwood falling from the, the sky yeah. and hitting the ocean and killing a third of the fish and all this stuff. Well, there's a biological component here on Earth that's actually called wormwood, and it's extremely toxic and even poisonous in, in a large enough dose. But what he theorizes is that there's actually like meteors and organic matter that was shot up into space during the flood event creating these mountains and valleys and all these things you have. And basically that these things, when they come back around are going to hit the, that there will be a massive meteor that has this organic component all around it that will come back with planet X, hit the ocean and kill the fish in the sea. It's a really fascinating concept. Now, whether or not that's true, I don't know, man, but you're right. There's definitely more to this planet X scenario. They're really considering that there there's truth behind this. There's a lot of people believe that Planet X is, in fact, it's a real thing. Yeah. 
So, so you know, go ahead. I, I tell people, they're like, well, what should we do? You know, uh, they get scared and there's like, I've got to go tell everybody about this. And, you know, what if the UFO lands on the White House lawn and shakes hands with the new president? And, you know, what, what, what do we do? And I think that I like to say, you know, first stay calm. If you're this wild-eyed, you know, wacko talking about the end of the world and, and aliens and green monsters, nobody's going to, you know, pay attention to you. So you got to stay calm. And if you're going to be an evangelist about anything, be an evangelist about Jesus, because that's really what all this is. But I, I, I do think that the end times are going to have a surprisingly extraterrestrial flavor. I think that um, the Antichrist is going to be a uh, alien or slash demon uh, yeah. uh, uh, human hybrid who's, you know, because Jesus was God and man few. Right. So like a mockery of that. A like mockery an imitation. because they'll have the mock uh, false prophet will be the mock Holy Spirit. They'll have the mock Christ will be the Antichrist. And of course the mock God and the devil. Don't they have, you know, all these abductees are being told that they are special ambassadors, basically disciples and apostles, right? So it's going to be this anti-Christianity that's going to come, but it's going to feel like, you know, War of the Worlds. Yeah, that's really interesting, the concept of the Antichrist having the same uh, lineage from the standpoint of part, part supernatural and part biological. Well, here's the thing. It's all supernatural because the fact that a human baby can be born with a spirit from two individuals that also have, I mean, yeah. the whole, it's obviously creation is just, it's, it's amazing. But what we're talking about here is actually the father figure being right. supernatural in nature. So I guess this would be the devil versus, you know, the Holy spirit or uh, whatever entity, the beast, whatever you want to call it. So Jake, in your uh, in your description of this talk, you you promised Nephilim, and we haven't talked about it at all. Yeah, I was getting ready to mention <laughs> Genesis six and delve into this, man. Well, what you know, I because I was concentrating on the secular literature, um, there wasn't anything in there about the Nephilim, so I didn't right. take that topic up until I got to the Christian UFO literature. And Chuck Misler talks a lot about that uh, in in his books, and he believes that. Um, they were wiped out by the flood and um, you know that these were the offspring of, of demons and and humans and that that is clear in the Bible that that's well in Genesis it, 6 yeah yeah well it talks about um, the sons of God and the daughters of men so we're not exactly sure what that means but you can make the case that they were demonic um, so I, I don't have a lot to say about it except um, uh, it you wanted to talk about it and now we've talked about it <laughs> yeah, yeah, and sometimes, guys, when we get on this topics, it's there's so many reaching aspects of this that I included that in here, um, and we're not going to get too in depth into it tonight. But I will say this: some interesting stuff has been brought to light to me recently that I hadn't thought about it. I was discussing this with someone the other day. They were talking about how um, it was Abraham had angels come and visit him and sit down with him to eat. And they ate, so they they ate food, right? Yeah, you see in the Bible how how they came in um, to to rescue Lot. You know, they came, they were physically there, they physically visit and all this stuff. So if they can eat in their physical beings, the case is there that maybe they have the ability to reproduce. You know, maybe they have the ability to do the. I mean. Here's the thing. There's so much. There's so much superior from an intellectual perspective than us with our limited thinking. They're, they're so much more powerful compared to us in our just ourselves, right? Without Christ, uh, humankind stands no chance against these forces at work on his own. Man, man is destroyed without God. Right. But um, they they have such power and such great abilities. That to me, it's not out of the realm of possibility if they know how to, they know everything about DNA. They know their, their intellect is so superior. They know how to, they know how to do all these things. Right. And so, yeah, I mean, I think, that, I think that there's a good possibility in Genesis six, it says it. So it's just how you're going to interpret it. Most of the mainstream though, man, I'll say does not touch this topic. They won't talk about it. Yeah. And the Bible says there were giants in the land after that. So like how, how do you why why would they just why would the bible just mention that after talking about 
the daughters of men and the son, you know, these well, angels going, go ahead. No, I'm just going back a little bit to the topic of the end times having an extraterrestrial flavor. You know, the Bible talks about a great deception that's going to come on to men in the end times. And I think we've been just spent an hour talking about the great deception. Yeah. It's, yeah. you know, they're going to say, no, we're not demons, we're aliens. Uh, Arthur C. Clarke wrote a book called Childhood's End. And in when he, the guy finally sees the alien, he looks like a demon. You know, he's got the, the pitchfork and he's got right, the right. pointy tail. And he's like, oh, yeah, you guys just misunderstood. We're really aliens, but you called us demons. What if it's the other way around? So I, I really think that there's going to be the appearance of UFOs, the appearance of aliens. And uh, that's that deception would totally resonate with our uh, modern mentality. Yeah, absolutely, man. Um, it, it's it's definitely fascinating stuff. It'll be interesting to see what's coming up, man. Tomorrow we have the inauguration of President Trump coming up. We've got huge changes going on in our nation. There's so much crisis right now in America and in the world. People are afraid. They you know they don't know what's coming. But the bottom line is our trust is in Jesus Christ. And for everybody that's worried about Trump, I can assure you this. God has everything under control. <laughs> and you know what? Nobody's taken off this planet unless he lets it, right? And so, um, yeah, things are tense right now. A lot of people are worried about many things. But, um, I, you know, they tried. To, somebody tried to take Reagan out unsuccessfully. You know what I'm saying? Like, so God has his way to protect his people and, you know, I, I hope it doesn't come to that, but you know what? If someone did try something and God has selected Trump for this hour, the Bible says that he he shall hold them in derision, hmm. that he stands in the heavens and he laughs. Hmm. He will mock. He, he holds them in derision. That man says, you know, basically says, let us take their bonds and put it asunder, meaning like the righteous people, basically, the righteous people that have the authority that are walking in God's will. There's, they, they consider that bondage, right? So they're saying, let us take their bonds, you know, let us take over, let's take control. And God is in the heavens laughing at them saying, I will hold you in derision. Like you, you know, you make your own plans, but I've got my plan. And so the bottom line, man, God is in control here. And, um, man, I am, just, it's been a great conversation. I, I, I've, uh, really enjoyed talking with you, Scott. Fascinating, uh, Fascinating topic. Uh, sorry, Jeff. That's right. <laughs> Jefferson Scott. Okay, so Jefferson Scott is your pen name. It used to be With, my pen name back in yeah, the day, but right. more because I was in publishing and writing more books, people knew me more by my real name. So I just yeah. changed all my books to Jeff Gerke. Okay. okay. So I want to give one plug real quick, and then I'm going to have you explain where all you where they can get all your stuff and your books and stuff. Right. Okay. So guys, tonight on Truth Frequency Radio at 10 p.m. TruthFrequencyRadio.com. There's a listen live button there. Here in about one hour, I'm going to be on with uh, Beth Eckert, former witch, uh, operated in the dark arts, fascinating testimony. And we're going to be breaking this whole thing down. It's going to be a fascinating conversation. Uh, I would love for you guys to join me on Truth Frequency Radio in the chat there as well. Um, we're going to be taking callers probably at the top of the hour. It's going to be a fascinating show. So that being said, hey, Jeff, you know, thank you for coming tonight, man. Very fascinating topic. I'd like to have you come back and maybe we can branch into some of these other areas. Sure. Maybe that you've done research. But tell us real quick the name of your book, where people can go to see your stuff, just whatever you got going on. All right. So go to Amazon and search for my name, Jeff Gerke, G-E-R-K-E, and uh, you'll see all my books. Uh, I, the one we've been talking about is called UFOs in the Christian Worldview. Um, the rest of my books are either novels or they are books on how to write fiction. So I don't know if this audience will be completely in overlap on those topics. But yeah, and then you can go to jeffgerke.com and see all the different hats I wear. And that's it. Jake, thanks so much for having me on. Yeah, awesome. And real quick, I just want to let guys know what we have coming up here in the next week. The next week. So guys, next Thursday, again, Thursday night is Sharpening Report live with me. James DeWitt does stuff uh, in other parts of the week, and Josh Peck does his thing kind of on the weekends. But Thursday night, you'll be able to find me here every week at 8 p.m. Please join me. Share with your friends. We want this thing to grow. And then also at 10 p.m., I'm on True Frequency Radio. 
So basically between 8 and midnight, a lot of times I'll go from 9.30 on the sharpening report, but from 8 to midnight, you guys can find me here talking about all this stuff. I've committed my time to this, to share the gospel, to talk about these things you guys are interested in. Next week, I've got Mike Shreve coming on. He was a former yoga instructor, heavily involved in the new age. And after he got saved, he led almost all of his 400 students to the Lord uh, over a period of years. And some of them are still getting saved. So that's coming up next week. The week after that, I'm having Carl Gallops on the show. He's going to be talking about Freemasonry and witchcraft and some of the infiltration in the church, these people in these organizations that try and sneak into the church and cause chaos. He's going to explain his experiences and how to deal with this type of stuff. Uh, it's going to be a fascinating topic. And then um, we're going to have Beth Eckert on the Sharpening Report for a video interview. We're going to talk to her on the week after on February 9th. The week after that, uh, Robbie Davidson's going to come on for Scientism Exposed, and I'll get the schedule up there, but it goes on and on, guys. I'm getting way ahead. I'm finally getting caught up, so uh, I'm really excited. Tonight's just been a wonderful time and fascinating, and again, uh, I thank you guys for joining us. Guys, until next time, this has been the Sharpening Report. Uh, God bless you guys, and we will see you next Thursday, and for those who are joining me tonight at 10, I will see you on Truth Frequency Radio. God bless.